the Lord has made. As you all know, my name is Evangelist Esther Olayin Kadia, and I have my daughter with me. Hello, everybody. Evangelist Abisola Oluojo. Amen. Amen. Glory, glory, glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our God is good. My daughter has come to say hello to you today. She has come to say hello to you today. Hello, and, um, <coughs> we have come to to have come to, to present the word of God. As you can see from the topic, it says the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Are you a habitable vessel of the Holy Spirit? That is the topic. The Holy Spirit. Are you a habitable vessel of the Holy Spirit? Amen. Amen. And um I'm going to be talking about the Holy Spirit. It's going to be a very short message. I'm not going to take your time very long. I want to share on my Instagram page. Please give me a moment. I want to share this message on my Instagram page. Please give me a moment. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Rainbow sin kalabarahiba santari basia. I want to share on my Instagram page and then we will begin. I want to share this word on my Instagram page and then we will begin. Amen. Glory. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 We're talking about the Holy Spirit and uh, we talk. I want to, um, you know, just it's just a word of admonition, word of exaltation. That is what we were going to be talking about. A word of admonition, a word of exaltation. Are you a ready vessel? Are you a vessel ready for the Holy Spirit? Amen? Before I go ahead, just before my daughter takes her leave, I want her to read a scripture for me. According to the book of Acts chapter 2, she's going to read verse 1 to 4. Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. Oh, let us pray first. Father, in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Father, in Jesus' name, in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Everlasting King of glory, I honor you. I praise you, O Lord. We adore you. We lift you high. We magnify your holy name. You are marvelous. You are awesome in our lives. Mm -hmm. Mighty King of glory, we cannot be late to how great you are, O Lord, in our lives. It is because of you that we are alive, that we are talking, we are we are breathing, we are eating, we are moving. It is by your grace. Oh, Father, Lord, we do not take this for granted. We say receive our thanks in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Lord, we thank you for everyone that is alive today. Thank you for everyone on this platform. Thank you for those that shall be joining me later on. Thank you for those that will watch this message later on. I thank you for every soul that this message is connected with. I pray, Father Lord, that you will visit them mightily mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Oh, right now, in the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. I sanctify every platform I'm using to give this message, the mm -hmm. Facebook, the Instagram, and every platform, I sanctify with the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. I come against every power militating against this gathering, against this messenger. I decree and I declare. 
that you all fall mm-hmm. in the name of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Let the God open up and swallow you up in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. I nullify every power, every arrow of the enemy targeted that this message has sent back to the sender mm-hmm. in the name of Jesus. Mm-hmm. I decree and I declare. Let the spirit of the living God pervade the atmosphere mm-hmm. in the name of Jesus. Mm-hmm. I station the spirit of, uh, I station the, the, whole, uh, the angel of God on each platform to stand guard and attention mm-hmm. uh, on the gates of this platform mm-hmm. in the name of Jesus mm-hmm. uh, with their sword of fire mm-hmm. in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. Father Lord, I decree so that you may increase in me. Mm-hmm. Mighty King of glory, make my mouth your vessel mm-hmm. and speak through me, O Lord. Mm-hmm. Word of life that even I myself shall not remain the same again mm-hmm. after this word in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. Touch every life. Mm-hmm. People shall not be hearers of the word alone. They shall be doers of the word as well. Mm-hmm. In the name of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Let every yoke be broken tonight. Mm-hmm. Let every bondage be uh, Those that are, are bondage be set free. Mm-hmm. Let every chains be broken mm-hmm. in people's lives in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. Father Lord, I thank you. Mm-hmm. Jehovah God, I worship you. Mm-hmm. Speak forth, O God, mm-hmm. and let your name alone, your name alone, only your name, be glorified. Mm-hmm. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Mm-hmm. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. In Jesus' name. Amen. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Mm-hmm. So we are talking about the Holy Spirit, and we're talking about are you a happy table vessel of the Holy Spirit? My daughter is going to read with me this scripture, Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. Please let us listen before I proceed. Amen. Amen. Please let us listen to her. Please all go ahead. Read uh, um, Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 4 reads, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, Amen. they were all with one accord in Amen. one place. Amen. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. Verse, last verse, verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. There ends this reading. Amen. And thank you very much um, for reading of the words. You can have your seat. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining this ministration. Great woman of God. Um, Pastor Mrs. Dr. Yamisi Dumoye, I thank you for coming online. Thank you, um, Dr. Pastor uh, Muida Mola Okela. Thank you for coming online. And thank you, um, my sister Lubisi Oye, Oye Tuji. And thank you, everyone that is joining me at this uh, moment. I thank you all. I thank you all. Please, if you can share, help me share. Hallelujah. We just read the scripture, Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. It talked about when the Holy Spirit came and descended upon the people. It descended upon the apostles and there was a manifestation with the speaking in tongues my question to you tonight is are you a habitable vessel of the holy spirit now when i say are you a habitable vessel of the holy spirit um, let's talk about the holy spirit first who is the holy spirit who is the holy spirit the bible recorded in the book of genesis chapter one i want you to know that holy spirit has been available has been around right from the onset of creation he was the third, the third, um, the, the tripod core. He was the the, 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 the the third party of God. There's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They have been together. They have been there at the point of creation, right from get go, right from creation, creation of the world. Hallelujah. And then we know that during the Old Testament, it was the era of God the Father when God was talking to the people expressly. He came to, used to come and dwell with Adam and Eve. And then uh, during the time of Moses, God spoke to Moses. So we know that God, that the Old Testament was the era of God communing with the people. And then when the New Testament came, when Jesus Christ came, it became the era of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He was right here on earth ministering to the people, talking directly to them. 
the people were talking to God the, the son they did not most of them did not even realize that this was here God meaning talking to them in the form of man and in the in the, in the entity of man he became a man so that he can live for you to follow after his um after his pattern hallelujah he came to show man that we can reach a right live a righteous life his purpose is to show man that you can live a sinless life even as a mortal man so he came and lived that life for us hallelujah and when christ left we have the era of the holy spirit that is the time we're in now and my daughter just read to you at chapter 2 verses 1 to 4 at about the era of the holy spirit when christ left he didn't go it's just a matter meta, metaphorical sentence christ is still with us but when he physically departed that means we couldn't see people couldn't see physically anymore he sent the holy spirit and holy spirit became the companion of man holy spirit became the the the, the, the mentor of man holy spirit became the the available friend the the the, the helper amen he sent the holy spirit but if we want the Holy Spirit to manifest in our life, are you yourself ready? Because what we have now is the Holy Spirit. And, and he will, the Holy Spirit will be around up until the end of time. Until the end of time, the Holy Spirit is going to be with us. So, what we have is the Holy Spirit. And God sent the Holy Spirit because you and I need the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit to survive the world of today. You need the Holy Spirit to be uh, 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 an overcomer. You need the Holy Spirit to be victorious in all that you do. You need the Holy Spirit to live a successful Christian life. Without the Holy Spirit, you cannot make it. So, you need the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit does not come physically and appear unto you. It comes to dwell on the inside of you. Hallelujah. With the Holy Spirit, when it comes... It comes to dwell on the inside of you as we could see in the book of Acts chapter 2 verses 1 to 4 that my daughter just read for us the book of Acts chapter 2 1 to 4 that my daughter just read for us but before I go back in there to read it again to you let's talk about who the Holy Spirit is as I said the Holy Spirit has been around right from the get-go from time of creation the Bible recorded in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 he said first this God created the heavens and the earth. All you see, all you don't see, earth was soup of nothingness, a, a bottomless emptiness, an inky, amen, an inky of blackness. God's spirit brooded like a bird above the waters and bees. I'm reading the message version. I'm reading the message version. Pardon me. I maybe I, I, my normal my favorite um, version is the King James version, but today I don't know why I happened to just open up the message version, and that is where I took the scriptures for, and I believe that you will be able to understand what I'm saying with the message version. So he said from the beginning, the heavens and the earth, there was no form and void. Everything was in disarray. Nothing was in order. Everything was in chaos, and the Holy Spirit hovered it overed it overed it overed above the waters that means the holy spirit was hovering above the waters amen the holy spirit did not have anything to go into the holy spirit did not have a vessel to occupy the holy spirit did not have nothing to he, he, the holy spirit was just there ready ready to inhabit ready to manifest hallelujah that was what the Holy Spirit was. It was there above the waters at that time. Now, let me go further to, Gen to, to, to verse 2 of Genesis 1. It says, The earth was formless and void, or a waste and empty, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Amen? The earth was formless. It was void. It was a waste. It was empty. And darkness was upon all the earth. Hallelujah. That is, that's how the earth was. And God said, now I'm jumping to Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. He said, and God said, let us, that is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, make man in our image according to our likeness. 
not physical but spiritual personality amen moral likeness and let them have complete authority over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, the cattle and over the entire earth and over everything that creeps and crawl on the earth amen so when god did that and when when uh, 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 god, the, the, the god suggested that to god the father the son and the holy spirit he now and back to do it now i'm jumping to genesis chapter 2 verse 7 he says then the lord god formed that is he created the body of man from the dust of the earth and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and the man became a living soul amen man became a living soul so when god formed the man from the dust and the man and he breathed into his nostril the breath of life hallelujah god formed man from the dust he was just a mere mortal flesh it, it was just a, a, a mere lifeless being when god formed the man but what did god do he breathed into man and man became a living soul man became a living soul it's because of the breath of god so the spirit of god hovering now found a place to inhabit hallelujah the holy spirit of god inhabited the, the man that god formed the breath of god is the holy spirit hallelujah the breath of god when god breathes it is the holy spirit he breaks into man the holy spirit came into man and man became a living soul so man did not only be was become alive man became a living soul hallelujah thank you my dear son uh my son uh uh uh, uh gideon thank you for joining me god bless you son man became a living soul when god breathed into man the spirit of god that was hovering now find a habitat an habitable vessel that he could dwell in hallelujah a man become a living soul i'm not going to go further but we all know what happened afterwards when man became a lifeless soul again that is when he lost the he lost everything to the devil when the devil came to tempt man he came to tempt eve and adam and they lost out then man, man became a lifeless soul that means i'm not talking about the the breath the air man breathing i'm talking about the holy spirit of god that god breathed into man came back out of man and man became a lifeless soul and god since then began to look for how to get man to become a living soul again and that was why he sent his only son and savior jesus christ to save us and to restore us back to god to give us back that living soul that's living that's life hallelujah that spirit of god so when christ came you and i when we accept jesus into our life we become a living soul again we become a living soul again hallelujah hallelujah rainbow sin calabasia we became a living soul again when christ came and guys you know when we gave our life to jesus immediately we attained that status again and we became a living soul a joint heir with christ of the kingdom of god hallelujah man became a living soul so what so what happened hallelujah what did christ do the bible says that he sacrificed it that hold on when well um, when you lose when you lose your position in christ when you lose that spirit of god you as i said you become a dead soul you are still alive but you become a dead soul look at an example is king saul god was with king saul god called saul 
But what did he do? He began to move away from the precept of God, from the uh, uh, doctrine of God, from the, uh, the, 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 the commandment of God. And he began to commune with the dead. He began to speak with dead souls. The Bible recorded it in 2 Kings chapter 21, verse 6. He said, He said, No, sorry, Bible recorded it in the book of Kings, uh, where Saul was begin begin began to commune with the dead and was doing other things. Likewise, the book of um the book of Second Kings chapter 21, he talked about this king uh, Ezekiah, and he said he himself too deviated from God and he was you know he, he introduced back to Israel out the the, the, the the idol worshiping and all the rest and they began to deviate from the presence of God they said he sacrificed he even sacri he sacrificed his own son to idols can you imagine that is not good that is not good that God don't want that once you are once you lose the spirit of God you become a dead soul and you become begin to dwell with deadness you begin to dwell in sin you begin to commune with demonic spirit you think you are worshiping the real god but you are not worshiping the real god you need the holy spirit in your life you need to be a vessel of god you need god to dwell in you hallelujah hallelujah the bible says in the book of romans chapter 8 verse 9 he said but ye are not in the flesh but in the spirit once you have the spirit of god in you you are not in the flesh you are in the spirit he says if so be that the spirit of god dwell in you but if any man had not the spirit of christ he is none of his that means if you do not have the spirit of god i just read the book of romans chapter 8 verse 9 if you do not have the spirit of god in you you are not part of god you are not you are not eligible to be a, a heir to the kingdom you are not but you are not pursuing the kingdom of god you have lost the battle right here on earth and as i said you need the spirit of god to win your battles on earth you need the spirit of god to be an overcomer on earth you need the spirit of god in everything that you do you need the spirit of god if you don't have the spirit of god you do not you are a dead soul you are just walking around you think you are alive fine you can breathe but you are your spirit is dead you need to come alive you need to be an habitable vessel of the spirit of the living god hallelujah don't be a dead soul you need to, you need the spirit of god <coughs> to be able to know what to do to be able to know where to go to be able to know where to stay to be able to know what to say to be able to know what you need how to attain it to be able to achieve exploits in your life if you do not have the spirit of god you will be bashed around by the devil by the kingdom of darkness anything can fall you down anything can bring you down you have to be you have to have the indwelling of the holy spirit for you to be an overcomer for you to be a winner hallelujah let me read again the book of acts chapter 2 when the holy spirit came when christ left and holy spirit came God knew that we needed the Holy Spirit. That was why He sent it to us. That was why He sent us the Holy Spirit. We know we need it. It is not a matter of you may need it or not. You need it. You and I need the Holy Spirit in our everyday life. You need the Holy Spirit to know what to do. You need the Holy Spirit to know who to marry. You need the Holy Spirit to know where to live. You need to you need the Holy Spirit for every day, day to day affairs of your life. So if you do not have the Holy Spirit, you are lost. You are just out there. You are lost. The Holy Spirit came. The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. He said that when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them clothing tongues like as of fire, and he sat upon them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Hallelujah. And God manifested the presence of that Holy Spirit was manifested by the utterance of tongues, and they began to speak in tongues. That's that showed the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. So if you have the Holy Spirit, seek for his manifestation. Speak for the baptism of the Holy Ghost to speak in tongues. Hallelujah. So like I said, you need the Holy Spirit for your day-to-day -day life, for you to be an overcomer. I told you already that this message is not going to be long. Hallelujah. It's not going to be long. Amen. You need the Holy Spirit for all that you do. Amen. The Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, it says, For who among men knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man, which is in him? Even so the things of God, none know it, save the spirit of the living God. So as a man, all you know is what, what physical men know. All you know is what you can see. All you know is what you feel. But when you have the Holy Spirit of God, you can discern. You can know things. You can understand things. You can see into the spirit. You can know where the devil is planning for your fall. You can see what the devil is planning. You can know that it, what, what the, your enemy is trying to do to you. The Holy Spirit, he will tell you all of that. It's, it, the Holy Spirit is a, an informant. It will tell you what your enemy is planning against you. It will also tell you what God is planning for you. So that you can be rest assured. Hallelujah. We are going to get there very soon. So the Holy Spirit is very important in your life. Amen. The Holy Spirit is very important in your life. The first Corinthians chapter 12 verse 2 says, Wherefore I make known unto you that no man speaking in the Spirit of God saith, Jesus is anathema. And the man can say, Jesus is Lord, but in the Holy Spirit. When you have the Holy Spirit, like I said, you'll be able to have the discerning spirit. You'll be able to know, convince in your heart that Christ indeed is the Son of God. And Jesus Christ is Lord. It is through the Holy Spirit that we are able to know that Jesus Christ is our Lord and our Savior. It is through the Holy Spirit that we, we are rest assured that Christ is in us the hope of glory. It is through the Holy Spirit that make us know in the spiritual that Christ is for us. And if he's for us, nobody can be against us. It is through the Holy Spirit that the evidence of the of, of, of the, the evidence of God in our lives is made known to us. It's not as if anybody has seen the Holy Spirit before, or anybody has seen God before. Even when Moses spoke to God, he did not physically see the form of God, even though God spoke to him. Hallelujah. But through the Holy Spirit, you're able to know that your Jehovah liveth. You know that your Redeemer liveth. You know that this God you are serving is the true God. You know that Christ is the Savior of man. Christ was is sent by God, the true Son of God. It is through the Holy Spirit. So it is dangerous not to have the Holy Spirit. Because if you do not have the Holy Spirit, you cannot know who Jesus Christ is. You cannot say that he is the Son of God. It is through the Holy Spirit that you can say and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Without the Holy Spirit, there can't be that conviction in your heart. You need the Holy Spirit. I want to beseech you, my brethren, my brothers and my sisters, seek the Holy Spirit. Seek God. Seek the Holy Spirit. Let invite the Holy Spirit into your life. You need Him for your day to day because it is through Him that you have dominion. Hallelujah. It is through the Holy Spirit that you have dominion. Hallelujah. Amen. It says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14, I'm going to read verse 2. It says, For that man, speaking in a tongue, speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth, but in the Spirit speaketh miseries. Hallelujah. So when you have the Holy Spirit and you have the manifestation of the speaking in tongues, it is through that, 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 that tongue you are speaking, that language you are speaking is the language of God. It is the tongue of the Holy Spirit. So when you have it, it's used, it manifests with the manifestation of speaking in tongues. And when you speak in tongues, you are speaking mysteries to God. You are speaking things that you, you, you yourself do not physically know or understand. You are praying some prayers that you yourself may not even realize that you were praying. I had a testimony of, of a time when we traveled to Israel in 2015. We were at a, 
what river was this that we were? We were at a, 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 a river. I, I it's not River Jordan. It was a, another river. It there. I'm trying to understand. But right there, the tour, the tour guide that was taking us round, told us. He said that there was a time some pilgrim uh, uh, people came to this place, and when they got here, somebody could just, was just praying and speaking in tongues. He was just praying and speaking in tongues and he just couldn't stop he was just praying even he himself does not know what he was speaking as he was storing them and showing them the place in the, in israel the man was speaking in tongues and when they finished and they led them away from the place and they left the place the following day there was an event where some other tourists came actually this time they were little children and the little child one well i would say child a teenager that they were being towed around ran and somehow got caught with the um the waves of the sea and the sea almost took her away but somehow she was rescued and she was saved and then when that man heard it he realized that that was the prayer he was making at that sea that was the inter inter intervention that god was making him pray it was for that child that would have died following the hallelujah the Holy Spirit will make you pray for things that you do not even know you are praying about to avert some some events some bad events some evil that may come your way when you speak in tongues so it's always good when you have the Holy Spirit to seek for the manifestation of this of speaking in tongues so that you can pray in the Holy Ghost and pray some things that you yourself do not know so that you can pray it out so that you can destroy the kingdom of darkness so that you can nullify the plan the plans of the enemy that the enemy is planning for you in the spiritual that you don't even know but the holy spirit knows all things and he will pray it out you as you speak in tongues you may not understand what you're saying but you're speaking mysteries to god you are making prayer you are making intersection you are intervening for your family for your children for your loved ones far and near it's always good to pray in the holy ghost so we need the Holy Spirit in our day-to-day -day lives. Nobody can survive this, this time, this period, this life we're in right now without the intervention of the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit to show you the way. You need the Holy Spirit to keep you alive. You need the Holy Spirit to keep you afloat. You need the Holy Spirit to teach you all things. You need the Holy Spirit to show you who to move away from. You need the Holy Spirit to show you your friends. You need the Holy Spirit to show you your enemies. You need the Holy Spirit to show you who is pretending to you. You need the Holy Spirit to discern, to discern who is for you and who is against you. You need the Holy Spirit to know the will of God for your life. You need the Holy Spirit to know who to marry and who not to marry. You need the Holy Spirit to know who, where to live and where not to live. You need the Holy Spirit to, to, to know where to make a move and where not to make a move. The Holy Spirit will teach you all of that. You need the Holy Spirit. And then again, again, the Bible says that if you if you do not fill yourself seek for the Holy Spirit something if you do not seek for the Holy Spirit if the Holy Spirit is not in you then you are making room for demonic spirits to be in you you are making room for demonic spirit to visit you you are making room for demonic spirit to occupy you because you see this our this our spirit being we are spirit being and our spirit needs to be occupied by either the spirit of god or the spirit of the devil so if you do not seek the holy spirit to occupy you to be in you to occupy that that space in your heart that space for the holy spirit in your heart if you don't allow the holy spirit to occupy it then the demonic spirit will occupy it amen the holy spirit will occupy it it cannot be empty it cannot be empty that is why the book of first peter verse 8 chapter 5 verse 8 sorry first peter chapter 5 verse 8 it says that the enemy prowls around looking for who to devour the enemy prowls around looking for who to devour now when the enemy is prowling around looking for who to devour he's looking at you at you as a vessel and he's seeing that empty spot in you he's seeing that empty space in your heart He's seeing that empty emptiness in you and he knows that it's empty he needs to come in and occupy it 
because it's empty so why would you leave your spirit man empty why not invite the holy spirit to come into you to help you it will guide you positively but when the devil the enemy when demons occupy your your spirit it will guide you to destruction it is it the bible says in john 10 verse 10 it says that the enemy has come to kill to steal and to destroy when the demonic spirit occupy you it has come to kill to steal and to destroy it doesn't come to make life good for you it doesn't come to make life better for you it doesn't come to 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 be a helper for you it has come to destroy that is all the enemy the devil wishes to do to destroy so you must seek always to make sure that you have the holy spirit and if you know that you are being tormented by the demonic spirit you will know by the kind of dreams you drink you will know by the kind of things you do if you just love sin if you just love sleeping around living dirty living lavishly living recklessly if you just love to do evil you will know that something is wrong with you that's when you should begin to seek god and give your life to jesus so that the holy spirit can come and occupy your spirit and when you give your life to jesus god will first of all chase away the spirit that is occupying you that is destroying your life and making you do terrible things to yourself to your body selling your body and you know prostituting and all the rest god will destroy the spirit and chase it out so that the holy spirit can come in and dwell in you amen but then as the holy spirit dwells in you when it comes in and dwells in you you have to watch it you have to take god you have to be mindful of the kind of life you live you cannot go back to sin and expect the grace to abound you cannot go back to living in sin when god has delivered you and occupied your spirit man with the holy spirit you cannot begin to live a reckless life again you cannot begin to live a useless life again you have to keep to the precepts of god you have to follow the will of god you have to live a holy life you have to live a righteous life god hates a, a dirtiness he hates dirtiness he hates sin god does cannot inhabit the space of sin so you cannot live a sinful life and expect god to continue to dwell with you and expect the holy spirit to continue to be your companion to continue to dwell on the inside of you hallelujah this body is a temple of the holy spirit when it comes in it dwells in our body hallelujah so you have to live a sinless life but if and if you go astray again and live a sinful life you at a point the holy spirit will take his leave again the holy spirit will leave again and immediately he leaves the the, the 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 demonic spirit will occupy like i said it has our spirit man has to be occupied it cannot be empty it is not no, no human being walks around with empty spirit something is in there either the holy spirit or the demonic spirit which one are you are you a habitable vessel for the holy spirit that is the question i asked at the beginning of this message what vessel are you what vessel are you are you a habitable vessel for the holy spirit check yourself ask yourself if you live a reckless life and the demon is in you it is in you and if god delivers you and chases out you have to stop that reckless life and live a good life because you know what happens if you continue in that reckless life let me take you to the book of matthew chapter 12. the book of matthew the gospel are coming to matthew chapter 12. i'm going to read from verses 43 to 45. so let's read it says when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man he walketh through dry places seeking rest and finding none so that demonic spirit that has been casted out of your life when it's gone out of a man, in that, that spirit begins to walk recklessly through dry places, seeking rest and finding love. This, the demonic spirit, they walk around seeking rest. They find no rest. They have been chased out of their dwelling, which is you. God has chased them out. Hallelujah. And immediately chased them out, you have to quickly make sure that Holy Spirit fills you up. Your, your body... It, 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 you know your body you have the indwelling of the holy spirit is on the inside of you you receive the holy spirit immediately do not leave it empty because that spirit that is walking around is still looking for a dwelling place 
he, he finds not the bible recording again let me read let me start again then i read it all the way through he says in verse 43 i'm reading matthew chapter 12 i'm reading from 43 to 45 he says when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. 44 says then he says i will return unto my house from whence i came out and when he is come he findeth it empty swept and garnished he findeth it empty swept and garnished this is the spirit of this is the demonic spirit it has gone out of you it's looking around find no rest find nobody to to to, to occupy find no vessel to occupy so he now says let me go back to where they chased me from let me see how that place is and if comes back per adventure he finds that you are there with your spirit empty he finds that you are there and your, 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 your spirit is empty nothing is indwelling the only spirit is not in you he finds the place empty the bible says that then he said verse 44 he says then he said i will return unto my house from whence i came out and when he is come he finded it empty swept and garnished what will he do when the demonic spirit comes back and find that you are still empty you did not bring the holy spirit is not in you they chased him out of you but nothing is indwelling in you your place your heart your your, your spirit is empty nobody is living there the bible says in 45 verse 45 i'm reading matthew chapter 12 and now i'm reading verse 45 the bible says then go it he and take with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself and they enter in and dwell there and the last state of that man is worse than the first even so shall it be unto this wicked generation this is jesus talking to these uh, scribes and as they were questioning him and you see it says that the holy spirit the, the demonic spirit comes back he finds the place garnished he finds the place clean but not nothing is dwelling in there he says he will go back find seven other more wicked spirits more wicked than himself and him and the seven will now come in to dwell on the inside of that vessel where they chased him from he was the only one that was there before now he has got to find seven more wicked so that it'll be more difficult to chase this the, the whole the whole seven of them out he goes to find small wicked spirit and then they occupy that same vessel that will not be your portion in the name of jesus you need the holy spirit you need the holy spirit make sure that you are filled with the holy spirit as a child of god when you give your life to jesus make sure that you be revived you receive the holy spirit you need the holy spirit you need it to survive this world you need the holy spirit to navigate this end time that we're in you need the holy spirit to teach you all things to explain all things to you to show forth all things to you to clear to clarify all things to you to bring all things to your understanding hallelujah you need the holy spirit you need the holy spirit it is even by the spirit of god that prophecies are given you know even when you receive prophecies when a man of god prophesy into your life and tell you this thus said the lord god is going to bless you god is going to do this god is going to do that everything that prophecy came by the holy spirit it came by the spirit of god hallelujah and it, it also needs the holy spirit to manifest so when prophecies are given they are given by the spirit of god and when the manifestation is going to happen it also needs the soul the holy spirit so when you have given a when you are given a prophecy and you do not dwell in the presence of god you are busy walking away from the presence of god you are busy gallivanting and living your life you are busy living a reckless life you are busy living an unfruitful life you are busy, busy wasting yourself away you are busy wasting your destiny you move away from the presence of god 
how do you expect the prophecy, the word of God, that God has spoken through his vessels into your life? How do you expect them to manifest? It takes the Holy Spirit for that to manifest. It takes the Holy Spirit for the word of God to manifest in your life. So you cannot afford not to have the Holy Spirit for there to be a manifestation of the prophecies of God upon your life. For there to be a manifestation of the word of God upon your life, you need, you need the Holy Spirit. So it is not even a matter of deliberation. It is not a matter of if you want. It is a matter of ne needed, necessary as a vessel of God. I don't expect a, a born again Christian without the Holy Spirit. How are you going to live as a conqueror? How are you going to live and fulfill your mandate? as a born again christian how are you going to fulfill the will of god for your life as a born again christian if you do not if you do not have the holy spirit you need the holy spirit you need the holy spirit in your life you need to work with your, the holy spirit he's your only consoler he's the one that will console you in times of sorrow he's the one that will support you when in, in times of need in times of turmoil in times of of tragic of 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 issues of life it is the only spirit that we hold your hands he is the representative of god in your life you may not see but he's right there with you supporting you speaking to you enabling you encouraging you helping you hallelujah it is the only spirit that does all this for a christian you need the holy spirit and you non-christian out there I want to encourage you to give your life to Jesus. You need to give your life to Jesus so that the Holy Spirit can come and dwell with you and dwell in your life and come into your body and make your body an indwelling place. Hallelujah. You need it. He says that with the Spirit of God, that's when you are a conqueror. Without the Spirit of God, you cannot conquer anything. Without the Spirit of God, you are fight. You have, you have loved the battle already even before the beginning of the fight. But when you have Christ, and you have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. The Bible declared you a winner. The, the Bible says you are more than a conqueror. Why? Because you have the Holy Spirit. So before the battle begins, God has already declared you a winner. In that battle you are entering into. What privilege. It's a wonderful privilege to have the Holy Spirit. To have Christ in you. In the name of Jesus. I want to encourage you. So if you have not given your life to Jesus. So you can say this after me. Father Lord. I come before you today. I repent of all my sins and iniquities. I reject them. I do not want to sin no more. I set you into my life as my Lord and my Savior. Have mercy upon me, Lord, and forgive me of all my sins. And receive me as your child. I, I give my life to you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you have repeated that after me, I want to welcome you into the, into the Christian fold. I want to welcome you to the body of Christ. I want to welcome you to the kingdom of God. You are a bona fide child of God, certified by the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus will begin to speak for you from now on in the name of Jesus. You are more than a conqueror from now on in the name of Jesus because you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. So I want to encourage you now that you are a born again Christian. You are you 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 have it you, you have eternity secured for you in christ jesus i want you to seek a living church around go in there and make sure that they pray for you so that you may receive the holy spirit you can also do the prayers at home too read the book of john the gospel according to john get to know who this jesus is get to know who the holy spirit is and he will come in and dwell in you and you will begin to see the manifestation even in your day-to-day -day affairs not only in speaking in tongues in every in your thoughts you will know that the holy spirit is in you the, from the way you think from the way you understand things you begin to understand things differently from the, the way you were doing before hallelujah you will live a victorious life be a vessel good enough prepared sanctified for the holy spirit you need the Holy Spirit. Ask yourself again, are you a habitable vessel of the Holy Spirit? If you are not, I want you to make amends today. 
if you have been with Christ and you know that you have walked away from his presence you, this is the time to do a new renewal come and renew your, your, your relationship with Jesus give him back your life bring him back into your life accept him all over again in, as your Lord and Savior rededicate yourself to Jesus and let the Holy Spirit manifest in your life and God will help you as you do so in the name of Jesus God bless you as you do this I pray the Lord will be with you the Lord will continue to encamp around you we will continue to lead you and show you the way the Holy Spirit will come and dwell with you and occupy you as a vessel of God in the name of Jesus I pray the Lord will equip you you will not stay away from the presence of God God will teach you to stand and not to fall God will teach you to love him to seek his word to seek his face at all times in the name of Jesus God will help you to increase your faith in him Bible says that without faith it is impossible to please God you cannot walk with God if you don't have faith it is the Holy Spirit that will help you to increase your faith in measures the measures as you hear the Word of God the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God as you continue to hear the Word of God your faith in God will increase hallelujah the Holy Spirit will be with you you will continue to do exploits for the Lord Lord will teach you you will teach your uh, your hands to walk and to win whatever you lay your hands upon will prosper you will make good choices in life through the help of the Holy Spirit from today on in the name of Jesus the Holy Spirit will come and dwell on the inside of you you will not lose your focus you will not lose your mandate you will not lose your destiny in the name of Jesus you will fulfill your destinies you will do the will of God you will be a solution God will use you as one of his vessels for a, for a solution in this end time in this generation we are in in the name of Jesus you will do exploits for the Lord God will use you your name will be written in it's written from today in the book of life you will never lose your name from that book of life in Jesus name you are eternal eternity bound you will not end up in hell you will end up in, in, in heaven with Christ Jesus as a joint heir of the kingdom of God and so shall it be in Jesus mighty name go forth I speak testimony week for you as you step out from today this new week I speak victory for you all through this week in Jesus name all through this week I declare you untouchable to the kingdom of darkness I declare you penetrable by the kingdom of darkness in the name of Jesus you are immovable you are a highlander you are unstoppable nothing can stop you nothing will stop you from getting to your destiny this week everything that you have been depending on god for that you have been asking him for you will receive them this week in jesus name this will be your week of mighty testimonies in the name of jesus this week god will show up and show up for you this week in jesus name things that men have declared impossible in your life god will make them all to be possible this week in jesus name this week the lord will remove your shame he will give you a robe of honor from today on this week in jesus name you will walk in honor you will walk with the glory of God all around you. The blood of Jesus will speak great things for you throughout this week, throughout this month. In the name of Jesus. Go forth and do expert for the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name I have prayed. Amen. Amen. Amen in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you all for listening. Thank you all for being with me. Thank you all for staying this long. Please share, share, share. And the Lord will bless you as you do so in Jesus' name. This week, you will rejoice. Don't forget our Thursday prayer day, Dominion prayer day line. Join us on Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern time and at 12 at 2 p.m. GMT time in Africa. 9 p.m. in America. Hallelujah. Join us and let us talk to God. Let us talk to God. Let us bring down the presence of God. Let us destroy the kingdom of darkness together. Let us establish the kingdom of God on earth. And let us remain victorious. We will pull down the kingdom of darkness this Thursday. Hallelujah. And every Thursday in Jesus' name. Thank you all. I remain blessed. Have a blessed, blessed week. Hallelujah. Amen.
Thank you.